let me apologize in advance because of my horrible reading skills, but let's get started. So the scenario says you are employed by an engineering company that develops monitoring systems to provide a solution to a problem for 190 mobile accessories. You have been presented with a client brief to develop a prototype monitoring system for a production line to check that the product is correctly assembled. So you're not making a product, you're just checking if it's been made correctly. So correctly assembled. The client brief. 190 mobile accessories has a production line that requires the assembly of magnetic car mounts to be monitored. An image of the magnetic car mount is shown below. So it has a 20 millimeter diameter magnetic disc situated at the top of the mount, 35 millimeter height of the mount body and the magnetic disc when assembled. So without it assembled, we're not sure what it is. It says image not to scale, but again, none of this is important to us. Next, we have to assist you to develop the prototype monitoring system. The client has provided the diagram below in plain view of the quality control monitoring area that will be used. So we have a diagram here that tells us the thing goes along um, the conveyor belt. Let's say checks if it's OK, if it doesn't know, if it's not OK, it goes in one direction, which is down here. If it is OK, it goes to the next stage, whatever that is. Right. We don't care. The steps in the continuous assembly process are. Uh, empty mount body is moving along the production line. A magnetic disc is pressed into each mount body. The prototype system in the quality control monitoring area will check that the magnetic car mount is correct. Uh, example containing a magnetic disc. Faulty assemblies, example those without a magnetic disc, are removed automatically. As part of the prototype system, correctly assembled magnetic car mounts will be uh, counted in batches of 10. To monitor the quality control of the assembly process, 190 Mobile Accessories has requested a prototype system that will, as a minimum. Now, this is a this would be, I'm just going to pause here. This would be a good idea to, I would say, copy these into your activity too. Change it around slightly, add some more stuff, make it as detailed as possible. Because this is the minimum thing that you have to do. This is what your system must do as a bare minimum, right? Detect if the magnetic disc is present in the mount body. Indicate the number of correctly assembled magnetic car mounts. Indicate the number of bodies that do not contain a magnetic disc. Indicate when a batch of 10 correctly assembled magnetic car mounts is ready. In devising the prototype quality control monitoring system, you will, you will need to consider steps three and five from the assembly process. If a major fault occurs during the assembly process, the client would like the option to immediately pause the monitoring system. In developing the prototype system, you should consider enhanced user experience. Again, the user experience is very, very important and how it would deal with any un unexpected events that might occur. The operation and testing of the prototype system does not require the purchase or use of actual magnetic car mount holders and must not use any individual production equipment, example conveyor. So you don't need to make a conveyor belt that pushes this that way and pushes that that way. You don't need to do any of that. We're simply trying to mimic the logic of this system to some degree. So technical specification for the 2022 paper. So this is what I have actually come up with based on my own knowledge, my own understanding. And I did quickly go over the examiner's report as well. I did steal a few points, which is perfectly fine. Now it is always, always recommended. And I say this again, ask your teachers to give you a copy of the examiner's report. Ask your teacher to go through the examiner's report with you. Ask your teachers to go over a full paper with you. I'm only going to be doing the 2022 paper, right? But it would be a good idea to go over 2021, 2020, so on and so forth. So it says 190 mobile accessories. The client has designed a magnetic car mount. The magnetic car mount, as its name states, has a mount with a magnet attached to it. This is just my introduction. Nothing, no new information here whatsoever. The client brief describes a system to be designed, which checks if a magnet is present in the body of a mount device. The magnet will sit atop the mount body. Simply put, so this is me again, another piece of the introduction. Simply put, the system checks if the magnet is there or not. If the magnet is present, the device should continue along the production line. If the magnet is not present, the device should, not ebb, should be removed from the assembly line. Quite simply, this is the overarching problem that we have. This is what we have to do. I've gone along and I've also said, the system needs to be able to count the products which are good and which are faulty. When the good products get to a count of 10, there should be a notification. It would make sense to do the same for a count of 10 for faulty products. Now, this is not something that they said they need. However, it's relatively easy to do the same thing because we're just going to do the same thing twice. So when it gets to a count of 10, my pen works. Yeah, when it gets to a count of 10 for the good ones, so the good ones, we have something happen. When it gets to a count of 10 for the faulty ones, the bad ones, we have something else happen. So I've said here, I'm going to need a single LCD two LEDs and a single buzzer can be used for the notification system. 
the LCD will clearly display the count in real time. So for example, I've got, I have LCD example here. So typically we're, I'm going to be most likely be using a 16 by two LCD. Now what this means is that I've, I can put 16 characters at the top. So let me just try and draw this out. So it's going to be something like this, right? I'm not going to draw out all 16, but let's just say at the top, I'm going to have 16 characters at the bottom. I'm going to have 16 characters, hence 16 by two. So that's how it works. So at the top part, I can say good pro. I mean, that means good products or good assembly or good mount body, whatever you think is good, right? Good products equals 11. Now this can count up to, let's just say 999, but I must stick within the 16 character limit. And I can say at the bottom of it, I can say bad product equals five. So that gives an indication straight away without, without any guesswork that we've had, for example, 1,200 good products and we've had maybe 50 bad products in the space of a day, right? Doesn't really matter how it's done. Next, a red LED could be used to flash X times when a count of 10 faulty products has been reached. A green LED could be used to flash X times when a count of 10 good products has been reached. So again, the red LED flashes when it's bad uh, and the green LED flashes when it's a single buzzer could be used to give a positive beep sound to flash. Okay, this meant, this, this was supposed to mean whenever the green LED goes off, the buzzer goes off as well. And as we know, buzzers are like normally, let's just say for, for argument's sake, it's a two-tone buzzer. So right, it will probably go beep, or like a high beep for a good one. And for a bad one, it probably go beep or a low beep. It doesn't matter how it's done, but we can even say beep, beep for good and beep, beep, beep for bad, right? It doesn't matter how. That's how I intend to use my buzzer. Again, just my technical specification. I think I've gone way, 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 way above and beyond. But again, the technical specification, the funny thing is you don't actually have to do every single thing in your technical specification. You don't have to hit everything. If you don't hit it later on, you can say why. Maybe it wasn't necessary in the end. Maybe it was going to be too technical to do. Maybe it was just out of the realms of the possibilities at the time. It doesn't matter. So what I've said here is a simple text file could be used to save the count of the system. This would be saved to the system storage to ensure that the information is still available even if the power is removed. Each count session will have the date and time saved along with the, um, with the good and faulty counts. Appending the information means the old information will not be lost. So let me explain what this means, right? Because I'm going to be using Raspberry Pi, uh, Pico W, I'm going to be using Python. It's very, very, very easy to actually create a text file in Python, right? I love the way it simply simplified it. I can simply say, okay, um, for example, let me just do this. Day one, let's just say day one. This is my text file. This is how it might actually, let me just open a notepad. All right, I've opened a Word document here. Let's just assume this is a text file that will be on the system. Now I will... I'll try my best anyway to show how to create the text file and how to put this information in there. Very, very simple. Day one, let's say day zero one. That's going to be the first thing in my text file. And the count is going to be updated every time. So day zero one, we have bad, what did I say? Bad pro equals, let's say uh, five, I think it was. And we have good pro equals 100. Let's make this closer together, right? This could be my thing. And on day one, I could say maybe uh, date, and I can say date and time, and I can put the date and time here. So today is the 27th of the 10th, 2022, and it is uh, 1241, 1241. I could do this. So the, the good thing about this is if I ever have to restart my system, if my system ever shuts down, I will have some information here, right? So let me copy this and put it down here. So that's day one. So day zero two, do exactly the same thing. This will be the 28th, let's say. And I could have 50 here and I could have maybe, I don't know, 10,000 here, whatever the case is. So I, this again is massive, massive, massive overkill for this kind of project, but it's still a technical specification I can add. This will definitely add user experience to the system because if someone comes and restarts the entire system, they have no idea how many things have been counted because they've, they've been boxed up and sent off, right? What they could easily do, easily do is look on the text file on the system to see what was done yesterday to see what was done today and say okay so all in all i have roughly 55 bad products out of 10,100. that's not too bad right and they can make changes as and when necessary but i digress let me go back to this 
An emergency pressure pad or push to close button could be used to stop the system in the event of an emergency. This would save count and indicate emergency button was pressed in the text file. So in the text file, right? Let's just say I'm on day three. And let me just put day three here. What could happen? The very first thing on day three could be um, emergency, right? E-M-E-R, of course I can't spell. Emergency button press, right? That could be the very first thing that's put there. Then I still have my date and time. Let's put the 29th here. Still have my date and time, bad products, 500, da, 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 white, whatever the case is. So this is how it would be if an emergency thing was pressed. This is how it is normally. At the end of the day, they turn the machine off. This is this is what it would show or this as well. But if the emergency button was pressed, let's say someone's hand got caught inside, someone's head got caught inside, the machine is catching on fire and I need to press the button. This is what it will show. The only difference here is it has emergency because it's told me emergency was pressed. And what I can even do, again, I didn't even write it there probably. I can say date date and time of the emergency. So I can say date and time and I can put the date and time. So I could say the 29th of whatever that is and I can change it to, let's say 1141, right? So this has a nice log. And I think in my opinion, this improves the user experience the overall user experience because again I can go back and check when the system started messing up I can go back and check when I press the button I can go back and check the actual count of each of those days another button could be used to restart the system taking it back to the main function again that's a very basic thing I'm going to skip that okay and I have my abbreviations here so LCD liquid crystal display these are things I might have used in my description LED light emitting diode Hall sensor detects a magnetic field. Magnometer, more sensitive compared to a hall sensor. A buzzer, sound device with limited range of sound. Push to close, a button which closes a loop of a circuit or a wiring diagram. And I would leave it at that. This is what I would actually do for my activity too. So everything I've said here, yes, it's in the form of, of um, a PowerPoint, but I would simply bullet point and copy these sentences into my activity too. And that, that's my activity too done. Some people prefer to simply use bullet points and not describe as much, but I think for me, this is a better way to go about it. If you choose to do the other way, that's perfectly fine. Once the detail, once the information is present, it doesn't really matter how it's done. Ignore the bullet points for now, but this is my actual document. And activity two has obviously two sections, which is uh, the technical requirements, technical specifications, sorry. And it also has the test plan. The test plan I'm going to do next, but just to give you an insight as to what the document would look like for me. I have my points here from my PowerPoint. I just copied them in. That's why it looks so messy, but ignore the bullet points for now. But as you can see, this is all the same information. I would say this should be about half a page, so not that much content there. So hopefully that gives you guys an indication of what I think. Now, again, I keep saying my way is not the only way. My way is not the right way. My way is just my interpretation of what I would do.